for Maharaja Ravi Teja. It is one more Friday of Raise the Storm, Bite the Dust. Ravi Teja had over beaten in time created the kind of a niche for himself. A kind of violent cinema where the ridicule of violence in itself ensured that the impact of violence was away from the mainstream of the film. However, he has been facing flop after flop, or at least he has not been making successful films of his standing. And therefore, perhaps he thought that with Ramana on duty, he gave himself a marginal image change, stick basically to his type, but sober down and try it out. Fakes. Fakes completely. This is a third of the film. Director Sarath Mandhava knows not how to use the script, meanders with the tail. His casting is woeful and he just can't get things right in this movie. We have the protagonist who is a revenue officer, subcurrent, something of the type, who is constantly at war with the local authorities and therefore gets transferred. So he is that quintessential honest officer who suffers transfers plenty of times. Finally, placed in the place, his native place, he joins Papa, Nasser and Mom, Pavitra Lokesh, but runs into a corrupt police officer in Jammi Murli, played by Venu, Totem Puri. And the entire story is about a girl going missing, a man going missing, Unfortunately, one of the men going missing is the husband of his ex fiance Mali, played by Rajisha Vijay. And initially, a lot of people think that he's doing this because he still loves her. But then Pushpa enters the film, and therefore you have sandalwood smuggling and the likes. Layers and layers of bad men till you reach the zenith of dawn. And they are also layered in different kinds of uh, make up this guy's look so that you will have to take your own time to find out who is where and what. And this going in search of the missing man is what Ramara on duty is about. Somewhere there's also this clash between revenue and police drawn out of some grassroots experience in Indian politics. But Unfortunately, as you sit and watch the film, the protagonist goes through what we all call cinema kashtali. And this time it's the audience that has more cinema kashtali than the film. Boring, non-happening. There's neither humor nor credibility to this film of Ravi Teja. We do know of his capacities. It's done a film called The Autobiography. He showed what he's capable of even in lighter films. This film just doesn't do anything. Everybody seems to be on a sleeping picnic. Take the chemistry between the hero and the hero, Ravi Teja and Divya Shah Kaushik. Visibly negative. They hardly look like a pair on screen. And Rajisha Vijayan, you don't know what you're doing at all. She looks as if a shock hit her. She has nothing to do with the script, wanders whenever she wants to, goes off whenever she can. And this is what happens with almost everybody in the film. Very, very unimaginative. Very drably negotiated. And Will somebody please tell these film makers to cut the length of their films from two and a half hours and two hours and 40 minutes to just about two hours if they don't have a script worth talking about? My 
clear stance of the film. So even if you're a Ravi Teja fan, this is not meant for you. Stay away, be on duty, and don't join Rama Rao on duty. Acknowledgements to Abhinav and Tatu for getting this at, to you through the technology part, the shooting it part. See you again with another film very soon. Until then, bye-bye.